Back in 2021, the Raspberry Pi made the bold move to enter the market of microcontrollers with their first microcontroller, RP2040, and the development board Raspberry Pi Pico. A few weeks ago, in August 2024, Raspberry Pi released on the market their second microcontroller, the RP2350, which is included in the new development board Raspberry Pi Pico 2. Although there are various programming languages and frameworks that you can use to develop firmware for these boards and microcontrollers, the official SDK comes for C and C++. In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate you how to install it and to get started with it on a Raspberry Pi single board computer. This way you can use a Raspberry Pi single board computer to develop firmware for Raspberry Pi Pico or other boards with Raspberry Pi microcontrollers. Before we do a deep dive into the technical steps, let's have a quick look at the Raspberry Pi Pico development board. Both this one and the Pico 2 development board have the same form factor and both have a micro USB connector. The dimensions of the printed circuit board are 21 by 51 millimeters. Both Pico and Pico 2 are very affordable, have very fast microcontrollers and a lot of GPI opens. They are a great fit for any maker. Please note that the official getting started guide for Raspberry Pi Pico explains how to install Visual Studio Code and after that how to install a Raspberry Pi Pico extension in it. However, in this video, instead, I'm going to do everything from the command line without using Visual Studio. If you insist on using Visual Studio, check the link in the description of the video to the getting started guide. Above all, Raspberry Pi is a famous brand of single board computers, so this is a great opportunity to demonstrate you how to use Raspberry Pi 5 with the Raspberry Pi OS, which is actually a Linux distribution, to install the C and C++ SDK for Raspberry Pi Pico, and after that to build firmware for RP2040 on the Raspberry Pi 5. I'm connecting a keyboard, a mouse, an HDMI monitor, a micro SD card on which is the Raspberry Pi OS and also I'm plugging an Ethernet cable to connect the Raspberry Pi 5 to my local area network. The Raspberry Pi source code of the SDK is available at GitHub so the first step is to download it. Open a terminal on the Raspberry Pi OS and type in the command git clone followed by the URL. Have a look at the description of the video to just do copy and paste of the command. After that, export the Pico SDK path as an environment variable, enter the Pico SDK directory and initialize all git submodules. These git submodules are actually various libraries used by the SDK, most notably the tiny USB library which provides uh, the USB features as well as the Bluetooth stack. It takes a while to download all these dependencies as git submodules, but thanks to the video editing we can fast forward. The second step is to install various dependencies of the Pico SDK to the operating system, such as CMake, the GC cross compiler for ARM, and various uh, build tools. It will take a while again to install all of them, so please uh, passionately wait. The installation time, of course, also depends on your internet connection. Please note that you can do the same on any other personal computer with x86-64 architecture, or in other words, the SDK also can be installed on Linux distributions running on computers with AMD or Intel CPUs. With the previous two steps, we have completed the installation of the Raspberry Pi C and C++ SDK for Pico. So now we can use it to build a firmware. One of the most exciting examples that I have seen is the microphone library for Pico. This is a library that allows you to capture audio from a microphone on your Raspberry Pi Pico or any other RP2040 based board. So let's... Um, clone the source code. Actually, this is a fork of the original source code because I have made some adjustments and build it. The source code is available in GitHub, so we will use again the git clone command to download the source code. After that, we will 
uh, enter the directory where the uh, library is. We'll create a build directory. Within the build directory, we're gonna first run CMake for the Pico board. And after that, we're gonna run make. It takes a while to perform a clear build of the firmware from source. So in order not to waste time, we're gonna fast forward. Upon success, you find a UF2 file. This is a file format specifically suitable for flashing microcontrollers over mass storage class, or in other words, removable flash drives. Raspberry Pi Pico is not the only development board on the market with the Raspberry Pi microcontroller. Actually, there are a lot of third-party uh, boards and devices with the same microcontroller, which means that you can use the SDK for them as well. Because of this, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use Anavi Dev Mic. This is an open source hardware USB-C computer microphone that I've personally designed using the free and open source software KiCad. All schematics are available at GitHub. So this is an entirely open source board. It's built around C Studio Xiao module with the same microcontroller RP2040, which you can find uh, on Raspberry Pi Pico. Therefore, we can use the same SDK. Let's leave the Raspberry Pi Pico aside for a while and grab Anavi Dev Mic. Press and hold the boot button and simultaneously plug the USB-C cable to connect it to the Raspberry Pi 5. Kind reminder again that you can use a PC instead if you don't have a Raspberry Pi single board computer. Anavi Dev Mic is also with Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller, so it acts the same way as Raspberry Pi Pico. In a few seconds, it's gonna appear on your Raspberry Pi 5 or a personal computer as a mass storage device, just as if you have plugged a USB flash drive. I'm sure that after that, you know the drill. It's straightforward and super simple. Just copy the UF file that we've built on the previous step to the mass storage device representing Anavi Dev Mic in this case, or if you're building another firmware, it's gonna be another device like Raspberry Pi Pico or something else with the Raspberry Pi microcontroller. When the firmware is fully and completely flushed on the device with the Raspberry Pi uh, microcontroller, the device will disappear from your computer as a USB mass storage device and the firmware will start working. For example, in this particular demonstration, we are using Anavi Dev Mic, which is a USB-C microphone. So after we have the right firmware on this board, the Raspberry Pi OS will recognize it as a USB microphone and we can directly use it. If there is more than one USB microphone attached to the system, we have to go to the settings and configure Anavi Dev Mic as the primary microphone. By the way, if you purchase a kit with Anavi Dev Mic, it's gonna come pre-flushed with the right firmware, so there is no need to do all this. Thank you very much for watching this video. As you have seen, it's easy to get started with the Raspberry Pi SDK for Pico and to install it on a Raspberry Pi 5 single board computer. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.